and now with the just mention in one ayah of hajj we find the discussion of qital fi sabilillah what's the logical relationship hajj could be performed only at makkah and makkah was under the control of the non believers the mushrikeen the kuffar so it had to be liberated and for getting makkah liberated from the clutches of the kuffar muslims had to go to war there is no other way no alternative no possible method that is why just mentioning hajj and then you know allah subhanahu wa taala switches towards qital fi sabilillah and then you know detailed discussion about hajj will, will follow wa qatilu fi sabilillah alladhina yuqatilunakum and go to war fight those in the cause of allah who are fighting you wala ta'tadu but don't transgress the limits the limits of decency the limits limits of morality that must be kept there are laws in islam you are not free to do whatever you like to do against your enemy you can't kill the old people the sick people the women you can't burn trees you can't burn the fields the harvest no so you have to observe the rules and regulations based based on moral law wa qatilu fi sabilillah alladhina yuqatilunakum this is the first ayah mentioning and so to so prescribing qital fi sabilillah to the muslims wa la ta'tadu but don't transgress the limits inna allah la yuhibbul mu'tadin verily allah doesn't like those who transgress the limits waqtuluhum haysu thaqiftumuhum kill them wherever you find them these are very strong words because actually they had done all you know persecution to the muslims for for at least 8 years they had turned them out from bakka the muslims had to leave bakka they had to leave their homes and hearts they had to leave their families at the mercy of the wolves of bakka so actually now the muslims had every moral right to retaliate up till that time they were stopped by allah subhanahu wa taala not to retaliate there's a different issue it's the wisdom of the revolutionary process of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but now that phase has started so don't hesitate in killing this is necessary just as a surgeon you know he cuts off the arm or the or the leg of a person because it has become venomous if you don't chop it off if you don't cut it off maybe the whole body goes you know so here actually waqtuluhum haysu saqiftumuhum kill them wherever you find them wa akhrijuhum min haysu akhrajukum and turn them out from where they have turned you out they have turned you out from makka you turn them out from makka wal fitnatu ashaddu min al qatl and fitna is worse than qatl why it is being said because yet there are some people and there were some people and there will always be some people good natured or weak in personality who would say it's no good going to war it's you know shedding blood is no good we should refrain as much as we can so here allah subhanahu wa taala is telling them go oh, wal fitna tu ashadd min al qatl fitna is worse than qatl worse than killing or murdering what is fitna fitna primarily means persecution because the kuffar had been persecuting the muslims they had been beating them so actually now they deserve it number 2 every condition in each in which a momin if he is placed in that environment he feels difficulty to practice islam it is fitna the whole system political socio economic system which is not based on islam which is not under the sovereignty of allah subhanahu wa taala it is fitna it is fasad it is rebel against him rebellion against him so wal fitna tu ashaddu min al qatl wala tuqatiluhum in al masjid al haram but don't go to fight against them near the sacred mosque you have to keep the sanctity of the of baitullah hatta yuqatilukum fi till that time that they they go to war against you near that mosque if they themselves injure the sanctity now then you are also free to retaliate fa in qatalukum if they fight against you near the sacred mosque 
فقتلوہم دین کل دیم دیر آلسو غزال کا جزا الکافرین سچ از دی ریوارڈ فار دیز کفار فار دیز ان بلیورس فار دیز ہو آر اپوزنگ دی دین آف اللہ اینڈ دی میسنجر آف اللہ اینڈ دس مشن فا ان ان تہ ہو دین اف دے ڈیزسٹ اف دے لیو اف دے چینج دیر ایٹیٹیوڈ فا ان اللہ غفور الرحیم دین از دی آلسو سبمٹ سبمٹ بیفور اللہ سبمٹ بیفور ہز میسنجر محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم فائن اللہ غفور الرحیم سو اللہ از فرگیونگ اینڈ مرسی فل و قاتل تکون فتن ناؤ وین دس فیز آف یور اسٹرگل ہیز اسٹارٹ ان کنٹینیو دس وار دس وار ول بی کنٹینیوس قاتل حتا لا تکون فتن ٹل سچ ٹائم دیٹ آل پرسیکیوشن اینڈس آل فتنا از فنشڈ And what is the second meaning of fitna which I told you that is clear from this ayah? وَيَكُولَ الدِّينُ لِلَّهِ What is the ending of this fitna? That the deen should become for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The whole system of life should come under the deen of Allah. Under the supremacy of the divine law. That is the fitna. Unless the whole social system is under the supremacy of divine law. It is under the sovereignty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the real sovereign of this universe. Till such time, although there might be peace, apparent peace, it's fitna, it is fasad. It is rebellion against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the duty of the faithful who believe in Allah and really believe in Allah, who really believe in Sharia, that to establish the deen of Allah and to impose the rules and regulations of the deen of Allah, they have to go to war. And they have to continue their battle, their war, till that fitna is finished, and till the whole system, political, social, economic system, comes under divine law. Wa qatiluhum hatta la taqula fitna tu, wa yakula dinu lillah. Fa idun taha, fa la udwana illa ala walimin. And then, if they desist, if they give up this opposition to the deen of Allah, then there should be no aggression against. فلا عدوان الا علی الظالمین ایکسپٹ اگینسٹ دی انجسٹ اگینسٹ دی ایول ڈوئرس اگینسٹ دی کریمنلس بٹ ون دے گیو اپ اینڈ دی سرنڈر دیٹ دیئر شوڈ بی نو ٹرانسگریشن اگینسٹ دیم اشہر الحرام و بشار الحرام دی سیکرڈ منتھ از فار دی سیکرڈ منتھ اف دے ہیو انجرڈ دی سینکٹی آف دی سیکرڈ منتھ جسٹ ایز دی سیکرڈ ماسک Now the sacred month, Asharul Hurum. If they go to war against you in the sacred months, then you can also go to war against them. If they have violated the sanctity of the sacred months, well, nothing will stop you. You have to retaliate. Asharul Haram will be Sharil Haram. But Hurumat or Kisas, there should be equitable retaliation in all such sacred matters. فَمَنْ اِعْتَدَى عَلَيْكُمْ فَاتَدُوا عَلَيْهِ بِبِسْلِ مَا اَعْتَدَى عَلَيْكُمْ If somebody is committing aggression against you, you also be aggressive against them. Just in the manner in which they were aggressive upon you. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُتَّقِينَ But in, during all this process, never forget Allah. Always have Him in your mind and heart. Have His taqwa within your hearts. Regard Him. Think. You must always think that he is seeing you and you are responsible. You don't break any divine law. And you must know and keep it in mind always that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only with the muttaqeen. That is his help. That, is, that will be only if you have taqwa. If you don't have taqwa, you can't, you can't hope for his help. Even during war, as I told you, you are not free to do whatever you like. No. The moral law has to be kept in mind. All the divine injunctions regarding war and, and battle, they have also been kept to be mind.